Hey guys, so I'm going to do a quick unboxing for this super cool deck. I just got it off of Etsy. Um, I can link uh, the creator below if you're interested. Um, it's super cool how everything is broken up. And yeah, let's dig in. I love the way it opens, very easy. I don't know, a lot of creators are starting to make these cool opening boxes um, that I think they're just really convenient and it also is really easy when I'm doing an unboxing because I only have one hand. Oh, okay, first, love this. I love this new kind of pattern of zodiac symbols that is um, being represented in this kind of dotted way. Um, I'm seeing that also frequently in a lot of um, decks and so I love that. And let's get into them. So this deck is actually made up of a few things. It's made up of zodiac signs, planets, and asteroids, nodes, elements, and aspects. So there's gonna be a card representing all of these different things and giving an explanation. Sorry, I'm trying to get the plastic off guys. All right, boom. Now look at how gorgeous the dotted look again, the dotted zodiac look, very beautiful. Cardstock feels strong and the golden holographic look is Weed. It's not just golden, it's holographic, so I'm in love. Um, and then the first card is the sun. So, you know, I love that. That's me, Leo. Stand out. And um, what is this? It says expression. So the ego, the self, the personal power. Um, it also stands for Sunday, Leo, energy, vitality, life force, leadership, pride, health, the yang of the yin and yang and the masculinity principle. All of these principles are associated with the planet of the sun or the star of the sun. Really, really cool. Okay, next we have, it's counter the moon, emotions. And I like that it's not even the counter technically, it's more of the partner. Expression and emotions go hand in hand. It's not the opposite, I really like that. Um, so this stands for moods, intuition, personal needs. Monday, cancer, the unconscious, oh, the zodiac sign of cancer, the unconscious mind or subconscious, comfort, feelings, family, home, reflecting yin of the yin and yang and femininity. And I also, for me, the moon is always just kind of dark divine feminine, okay? That's what I always kind of um, remember. Not necessarily evil, but dark divine feminine is really how I associate the moon. So all of these, um, you know, moods and feelings and yin and reflecting and all of that is definitely uh, coming through here. I love these cards. Mercury, thoughts, perfect. Intellect, communication, Gemini, Virgo, Wednesday, agility, mentality, information, perception, memory, travel, transportation, education, research. I mean, these are just, I'm not going to go through all of them, but like, look at how beautiful each planet is and how well, um, you know, the, the planets are represented by, um, you know, the solitary name, like the standout <clears throat> um, title kind of name, um, as well as the descriptors below. And then also how beautiful the graphics are. Look at that. Oh man, Earth is about lessons. Come on now, tell me this ain't a lesson right here. This is a preach, okay? This is a preach. Ooh, I'm loving it. Mars ambition, I love that. I love that, I love that so much. So many times people think of it as anger and assertion, but it really is drive. Oh, love that. We've got Jupiter, oh, abundance, yes. Give it to me, I love it. Definitely growth and abundance with Jupiter. We've got Saturn, definitely discipline. Think of Saturn as the father of the zodiac, or I'm sorry, of the planetary system. He is definitely the dad. Did you do your homework? <laughs> um, we've got Uranus with breakthrough. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Wow, these are nice. The colors are beautiful. I hope they're coming through to you guys that way. Um, Neptune mystery, confusion. Wow, this is so cute. All right, we're not even out of the planets. Let me calm down. Pluto is definitely renewal, transformation, rebirth. Oof. Okay, now look at this. Look at this. We've got Lilith. These are the... This is a planet too? Why does it look like a black hole? Darkness, untamed intensity, independence. I'm gonna have to look up that one, guys. I'm not sure about this one. That's pretty cool. I didn't know Lilith was a planet. Chiron is a, what is it? 
Ugh, my son knows all these things. A dwarf planet. Is that, well, Lilith, no. Lilith looks like a black hole. So Chiron is a dwarf planet and it's for healing. Um, it actually is the, I believe it's the closest um, <clears throat> dwarf planet to us because it's in the, um, the, what is it? The asteroid belt closest to us. So not the Kepler belt, the other one. The Kepler belt is like the outer asteroid belt. And then there's the inner one that's like, right after Mars in between Jupiter, and it kind of keeps the inner planet separate from the outer planets, sort of like the membrane of a cell. Anyways, I'm going too deep with this, but yeah, I believe that this is the closest um, dwarf planet to us. Juno, I believe is also um, uh, semi-considered a dwarf planet, semi-considered an asteroid formation. So it's interesting that they have it here in with the planets, but hey. Oh, no, Juno is definitely an asteroid. Okay, they have it lumped with the asteroid. So then so is Vesta. And Juno, I'm sorry, represents commitment, if I was wiggling too much. Vesta is another asteroid representing devotion. And then we have this one called Comet. Okay, it's just comets in, in general, I guess. Um, and I like these little symbols up here. I, I haven't been doing a good job of showing them, but there's definitely little um, sigils or signs attached to each card that's really on point. I like it. Um, comet represents unexpected, makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna look up those um, as they uh, <clears throat> pertain to astrology because I'm really not aware of the depths. And that's part of, well, no, that's why I ordered this deck is because they're, um, you know, learning astrology is learning another language. Uh, I've heard of the North and South node. I know a little bit about those, but I don't know. I didn't know that comets um, so much played a role. So I'll have to do a lot of research. And that's awesome because not only will I have the research to tie into their um, meanings, I'll have these flashcards to kind of quickly remind me of how they tie into readings and daily lives and people. Um, so your North node is like your faith. Your fate, I'm sorry, um, it's like the path you are, it's like your dharma, what you should achieve. What is the path for you in this lifetime? Um, and where your your life is always kind of headed back to that. Uh, we have the south node, um, and that is the karmic past. So if you see the two here, I like how they are represented. Um, <clears throat> it's like what you're headed towards and what you um, encountered last time that's similar this time or that you re-encountered this time. So if you can see the south node as being the dotted line, or I'm sorry, the south node is the solid line and we'll say that that's the path you traveled in another life and you're re-entering or re, um, you know, touching on these themes again in this life. <clears throat> and um, that's why you're being affected in this way. Or the North Node, you are slated um, to go on this track of life. Last time you went this way, but this time you're going to go up and follow the dotted course. It's dotted because it's not um, yet solid yet. It's not yet set in stone based on choice in life. But that is your trajectory. That is your, your Northern Star. We can call it that too. Um, so we have now made it through the planets and the asteroids we're going to jump into the zodiac signs now and i'm going to go through those a lot quicker just because this video doesn't need to be this long okay so we have aries we have the dates 321 to 419 there is the sigil or emblem there and then there's also the standard zodiac symbol in the center of the card really bright um i like that they're a little different they don't have the um space background, but it, it it's going to help me um, long term with learning to remember that these are the zodiac and those are, uh, you know, actual physical um, things in space. So I do like that there's a separation even in that sense. Um, so Aries represents the competitor. And I like all of the words assertive, aggressive, action, courageous, dominant, rebellious. And then it also has ruler of the first house. Uh, we have Taurus. The connoisseur, ooh, very, very good. So cute, I love it. Comfort, luxury, reliable, possessive, productive, ruler of the second house. Mm -hmm. uh, Gemini, 521 to 620, the investigator, absolutely. Absolutely, gotta figure it out. I love it. Cancer, 621, 722. The caretaker, loyal, emotional, depth, sympathetic, moody, tenacious, protective, nurturing. Ooh. Ben will ties, y'all in line. Leo, here we go. 723, 822. 
the showstopper, enthusiastic, generous, magnetic. Yeah, definitely the showstopper. Like I, I've arrived. <laughs> Things are going to go differently now. I love that. I love that. All of these are so true. Proud, headstrong, loyal, seeks approval, loving, show off, bossy, extroverted, magnetic, pretentious, generous, and enthusiastic. All right, Virgo. This is also my rising and moon. So this is very much me a lot. And my Mercury. So <clears throat> pray for me. Um, the perfectionist, analytical, planning, perfection, hard work, helpful, detail oriented, reliable, confident, skeptical, overly critical. And the root of the sixth house. Libra, the mediator, fair, people pleaser, balanced, sociable, sensible, diplomatic, polished, easygoing, fickle, indecisive, harmonious, self indulgence, ruler of the seventh house. Scorpio. The Enigma. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't even know yourselves. Intense, strategic, secretive, sexual, enticing, extreme, powerful, passionate, manipulative, competitive, possessive. And you know what's so funny? I'm no shade to anyone because we all have negative things in our in our descriptions and we all have positive things. But it seems to me that some people feel that their words are more negative than others. Um, and I guess following like, you know, I don't know, social media or mainstream media, you would think that possessive, um, manipulative, extreme might sound worse than the words used to describe Libra, the negative words like people pleaser, fickle, indecisive, self-indulgence those don't seem as egregious so i do understand why more libras attuned to um astrology than scorpios are not attuned to uh subscribe to it than scorpios and i definitely understand why leos are probably the most you know wide proponents of astrology just because the leos typically have the best descriptions on the on the good um end of things like you know I don't know. What were they? Showing off and <clears throat> enthusiastic, generous, um, headstrong, proud, extroverted, show off, loyal, loving. You know, those are good things. Nobody else even says loving. Like, why would they make Leo sound so much better than others? I don't know. But I get the I get the aversion for certain signs. And it seems like there are certain signs. Gemini, Scorpios, um, You'll find out Capricorns at times. There's some signs that just don't subscribe, and I get why. Like, I don't want those descriptions on me. Um, Sagittarius, the explorer. Y'all are really your sign. Like, I've never met a Sagittarius that wasn't 100% well described by their horoscope. <laughs> I don't know if y'all tend to have, you know, complimentary signs in your sun, moon, or rising or what, but y'all are definitely well spotted. <laughs> Um, the Explorer, Adventures Distant, Places Free Spirit, Clever, Travel Philosophy, Bold, Blunt, Impatient, Argumentative, Independent, Capricorn, Driven, Stability, Patience, Persistence, Materialistic, Ambitious, Cautious, Practical, Traditional, Workaholic, Detached, and Aquarius. The Diplomat, Inventive, Original, Opinionated, Analytical, Distant, Intellectual, Humanitarian, Friendly, Tolerant, Outgoing, Ruler of the Elevens, and then Pisces, The Dreamer, Mystical, Intuitive, Psychic, Romantic, Sacrifice, Sensitive, Fantasies, Escapism, Empathy, Artistic, Adaptive, Addictions, Ruler of the Twelfth House. So, Love all of those. Very, very on point for me. <laughs> I know some of y'all might disagree, but um, also consider <clears throat> the reason you may disagree so much with astrology is because you're focused so much on your sun sign. Everybody has all 12 signs in their chart at some, you know, degree or another. You may have, a, you know, a full blast or a little inch but you have a little bit of everybody in you so you might identify more as a Virgo even though you were born under Scorpio or you know those sort of things happen all the time based on the rest of your chart so just keep that in mind also for the skeptic all right so now we have the houses which is really cool 
um, and what they represent. So the first house is about self. Second house is about material goods. <clears throat> Third house is about communication. Fourth house is about home. Fifth house is about pleasure. Sixth house is about work. Seventh house is about your partnerships. Eighth house is eighth house. Hmm is about transformation. Ninth house is about learning. Tenth house is about status. Eleventh house is about community. 12th house is about subconscious. And if you do notice that in the houses and in the planets, a lot of the themes are overlapping. You are very intuitive. That is absolutely correct. And there is um, a lot of overlap because the houses are derived from the meanings of the planet, but they don't always line up. So it's kind of like um, a lock where you're dialing in two different dials and you have <clears throat> to turn one to the left and one to the right. There's a little bit of that going on um, when it comes to the 12 houses and the 12 planets. All right, so this is so pretty. Do you see that, like, how it stands out? I don't know how they did that. It's like it's glowing. Like, it looks like that on the phone, for sure. And it's still, it's just, I guess these are a little grayer, so um, the colors are kind of popping out for me. But anyways, let's do um, these small aspects really quick. Well, not small, but these are the aspects. Um, and this is the last of the pile. And this is going to be a trine. <clears throat> so that is when, if you're looking at the dial um, and you're lining up the two outside circles in concentric circles, there may be a point <clears throat> um, between the dials, um, or a few points, three points actually, so thinking of them in a circle, where um, aspects of the chart are connected. Like you may have... Um, the subconscious 12th house matching up perfectly um, to the moon and then um, reflecting off of your rising sign that's also, you know, the moon or something like that. So <clears throat> I don't know, just it, I'm not yet an astrologist, so forgive me for my poor explanations, but I do have a very minuscule understanding and I'm definitely going to come back and update y'all. Um, I do read tarot. So this, this information alone is going to help me, um, with that. I've always been like a lifelong, um, like peeker in to the class of astrology. So I do have a lot of understanding of the planetary, um, attributes and, um, now coming into the understanding of the houses. Um, I don't know. I'm just really excited to use these cards and learn, uh, learn a lot. So um, next, we have a square. So a square is not harmonious. Um, a triangle is. A square is not harmonious, which is very interesting because in so many other aspects of life, the square represents the four elements or the foundation of a ho home or the foundation in general. I know it doesn't tarot, but in astrology, a square, a tiny little square over there, actually represents tension. Okay. So that's when the planets around that dial are, you know, opposing each other poorly are connecting to each other for them. We have a sextile, and that's when there are a lot, I believe, of connections across um, that um, kind of dial that the zodiac makes. And then a conjunction, that's a good thing. We just had a major conjunction about a year ago, I believe, um, in December of 2020, and everybody was very excited um, to be receiving light codes and upgrades and um, I believe a lot did awaken in a lot of people. So I don't know. Let's see. Now we've got opposition. Confrontation. Why is it a disco ball? Uh, reflecting, mirroring, seeking balance, test, interaction, push-pull dynamic, internal conflicts, uncertainty, wavering, acknowledgement, and respect. Interesting. 
Well, there you have it, my dolls. I have completed my astrology, <laughs> the deck. Um, flip through. I, I'm in love. I am probably gonna be playing with this for the rest of the day, and um, yeah, I'm going to also um, kind of go through the guidebook. I didn't show you guys. It's a small kind of pamphlety thing, but it is very useful. It has all of the small symbols. Um, it tells you a little bit more breakdown. Um, for what the planets are associated with. So that's really cool. And even the co comets and uh, smaller planets. And then they have the same for the zodiac signs. And then the houses on the back. There's a little more in-depth explanation of everything. They also give you um, little ways to utilize the deck. So little um, suggestions of how to use it for study, for divination, and just for learning. So I think that this is probably gonna be the way that I use it the most um, initially, learning and understanding. So what I'm gonna do is gain a better understanding of current planet placements and transits. Um, this is an example of the sun conjunct the moon. So placing these three um, cards down, literally sun conjunct in the moon, I'll be able to kind of visualize the themes and I'm super visual, super clairvoyant. So that will be very, very fun for me um, to really, you know, get in depth with astrology. Oh, I'm so excited. This is amazing. And I like, I had hesitated. I probably bought one or two books on astrology, but I knew a book wasn't going to do it for me. This is, this is amazing. This is really going to help me, um, have a jumping off place. And I'm kind of that type of person that I need to have a good, you know, basis before I jump in something or claim or, or profess myself to something. Um, and yeah, I just do a lot better in the long run when I give myself a head start. So this is going to be awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would definitely recommend this 10 out of 10. I'm going to have so much fun. Um, and if you are a regular on this page, um, get used to having these in your reading um, once I get used to um, you know, playing with them. They're so much fun. All right, love you guys. Talk to you later.